Hello everyone, I am the Realm Master, and welcome to the inaugural episode of the Game Realm. Here in the Game Realm we look through the classics, the gems, and those that should be banished from existence. Each game is summoned to be reviewed via the Kalase Chest of the Gaming Lords by casting one of many summon spells. All these spells will be revealed in time. And now, without further delay, let us bring forth our very first game for review, shall we? <clears throat> A video game to Hirai Xperia that draws its basis from other forms of media! Ah, yes. Little Nemo, the Dream Master. No, not that Dream Master. Although she is good too. Little Nemo began in 1905 as a comic strip about a little boy who goes on many adventures within his dreams. Although most people are more familiar with the animated movie that was released in 1989. And of course, with any movie that comes out, comes the inevitable video game tie-in. So, Will this be one of the rare movie games that is actually worth playing? Or will it deserve to be exiled into the abyss of bad adaptations? Let's take a look. So each dream begins with Little Nemo hopping into bed to dream away. At the beginning of the first dream, you come across this green clown fellow where he tells you that you have to collect six keys in order to advance. Sound simple? By the way, he says his name is Flip. Well, to tell you the truth, he does kind of look a little bit like Flip Wilson if he were seasick. So your main weapon is candy that you throw at enemies, although the only good it does is stun them. What you're actually supposed to do with it is feed it to these animals that give you some sort of special ability. You do this by feeding them three candies and then they fall asleep. If you just walk up to these animals while they're still awake, they just get all snippy and hurt you. I don't get it. How can something fall asleep and dream but then another dream? Hmm. Christopher Nolan play this game as a kid? Another thing, what exactly is in those candies that makes things fall asleep anyway? Oh no. Slumberland must be a pseudonym for Tijuana! Anyway, when an animal falls asleep, you walk up to it and... Oh my god. Am I seeing this right? Am I really seeing this right? Little Nemo appears to have skinned a frog dragon thing and turned it into a Halloween costume. Where was PETA on this? Are you telling me that they bashed Mario for wearing a tanuki suit and yet they brushed off Little Nemo? I mean look, you can still see that thing's lifeless eyes. And if that's not enough, in a later part of the level, Little Nemo appears to have turned a blind gopher into a hoodie. Keen eyes, PETA. Keen eyes. Anyway, while you're in the skin frog dragon thing, you can jump on enemies like Super Mario Brothers. Speaking of enemies, let's have an enemy roll call. We have purple spiky snails, white army wasps, frogs, and little green bats. And let me tell you, they got a little carried away with how many enemies they put in each level. Sometimes the enemies get right in front of the animals slash eventual fur coats, so you unintentionally stun them when you're trying to feed the animals. And other times they're in places where it seems like you have no choice but to get hit. There's also this purple dinosaur thing who kind of looks like Barney the Dinosaur's pet dog. If you feed it the candy, thankfully you don't turn it into clothing, you just ride it and somehow climb walls like Spider-Man. Although I must ask, why are its eyes closed? Maybe Nemo's controlling its mind like that Crash Bandicoot game Mind Over Mutant. So after you get all the keys, we get a little cutscene where Nemo's mother tells him to get out of bed. And then after that we just jump right into the next stream. What, is Nemo under a sleeping spell like Zelda was that one time? Anyway, you come across what looks like something that just came out the Best Beep Forgotten Area of Fantasia, where he tells you to meet up with someone named Oompy. I said Oompy! Here you come across spiders, snakes who look like Master Viper from Kung Fu Panda, and hey, I didn't know Donkey Kong was in this game. No, he doesn't throw barrels, but he does punch enemies in the face! It's a good thing there isn't a woman on his back, though, or he'll probably have an angry plumber with a giant hammer on his tail. Now this part right here is where, in my opinion, the game gets really difficult. 
I say that because there is a part where it looks like you have to jump down to what looks like some sort of cave. You do this by grabbing on the walls and climbing them. Which, by the way, makes more sense to Barney's dog climbing the walls. But the problem is that there are spikes on the top and nothing to grab onto at all at the bottom. And although you could try to make a leap of faith, the trajectory is so bad you'll just end up missing the mark. Same thing goes with trying to make it across, too. And dying from just one hit on the spikes, even with Donkey Kong, doesn't help either. Heck! 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 I know it looks like I'm doing a real crappy job, but I'm actually trying my hardest. But no matter what I do, I just can't seem to get into this cave here. Maybe it's probably for the best to spare the Honey Nut Cheerios be over there. So, final thoughts? I actually like this game. It has a wonderful dreamlike atmosphere, some really creative characters, and simple pick-up-and-play gameplay. But good lord, is it difficult. It's, it's like, like fighting, fighting into, into a chocolate-covered chocolate rock. rock! And now it's time to introduce the Agent Meter. The Agent Meter determines how well a game has aged over the years, judging by beverages. So according to the Agent Meter, this game has aged as well as... Wine. Excellent. So in conclusion, this game is a dream to many, but a nightmare to PETA. I'm the Realm Master, and I'll see you all again soon here in the Game Realm.